Hi everybody, so today we are gonna be talking about oxytocin. So let's go ahead and jump right in. In this video, I'm gonna be concentrating more about what happens during childbirth with oxytocin, okay? As well as after childbirth when we have lactation and things such as that. So what we have right here is a uterus, okay? So this is going to be the fundus that's in here. Um, I didn't draw it, let me put it up right here. On the outside of the uterus, I am going to have what we call the perimetrium. So that's gonna be my outer part of this. This is all we're gonna say about this, right? And it'll be over here also. All right, so there's gonna be my perimetrium. My vagina would be down in there, okay? On the next layer, what's gonna happen is we are going to have something called the myometrium. The myometrium. The myometrium is actually made up of muscles, and this is gonna be responsible for contraction to push the baby out as it's being born, all right? Then if we come to the inside here, we are going to have some cells that form. It's a membrane that's going to form during childbirth called the decidua, or these are decidual cells. Okay, and then this, this pink part, or red part that we're going to see right here, this is going to be called the chorion, or chorion cells. And then we're gonna have the amnion, or amnion cells, okay? And we're gonna come back to these in just a minute. So let's talk about what happens in pregnancy. When a woman gets pregnant, the amount of progesterone starts to increase. Okay, the amount of progesterone is gonna to start to increase. Now, the function of progesterone in pregnancy is to keep these myometrium cells from contracting, right? To keep the muscle contracting and pushing the baby out before it's born. So it decreases myometrium activity Okay, and it's also going to basically inhibit labor. So that's going to it's going to inhibit labor. Okay, then we also get an increase in estrogen. Now, estrogen is going to basically do the exact opposite. The estrogen is going to increase myometrium activity or contractions. Myometrium activity. And like I said, that's contractions. So this decreases contractions, this increases them, right? And what it's also going to do is it's going to cause dilation of the cervix. Okay, and I don't think I mentioned the cervix yet. This is the cervix that's down here. So what happens is when a baby's going to be born, they're gonna pass out through here, and then they're gonna come out through the cervix and then go through the vagina and come out, right? So here's what happens throughout pregnancy, is usually throughout pregnancy, progesterone is going to make these cells insensitive to estrogen, right? So it's going to prevent contractions. You do get some contractions, right? But it's going to, for the most part, prevent contractions because we don't want to push that baby out until it's ready. Estrogen, like I said, does the opposite, but it's not going to be doing a whole lot at this point. As we get towards the end of pregnancy, what's gonna happen now is these cells are going to start becoming insensitive to progesterone. So if they become insensitive to progesterone, that means they're gonna become more sensitive to estrogen. So what's gonna happen now? Well, remember these cells right here? These cells are going to actually re release oxytocin. Now, most of the time we're gonna get oxytocin from the brain, but, but at the beginning of pregnancy, or I'm sorry, at the beginning of uh, labor, we are gonna actually get oxytocin released from these cells here. What the oxytocin is going to do is when it's released, is it's going to act on this, these decidual cells, and it's going to cause these to release something called prostaglandins. Specifically, prostaglandin, which we call PG, uh, PGE, and PGF, to A. These now, along with the oxytocin, will start to cause some contractions in the uterus, all right? But it's not gonna expel the baby, it's just gonna cause some contractions in the, in, in the uterus, all right? So now, let's look what's gonna happen next. Oh, one more thing about the estrogen before we get there. I'm gonna take one of these cells here, or two of these cells here, just to show you what's happening. And I'm just gonna show it as two, but this is gonna be happening all over. So we have these muscle cells that are all in here, right? These are my myometrium cells. And on these myometrium cells, what's going to happen is the estrogen is going to increase the amount of receptors that are on here. So here's a receptor, 
here's a receptor, here's a receptor, and it's actually going to increase the amount of receptors on here by about 200 times. When it increases the number of receptors, it makes these cells more sensitive to oxytocin because now the oxytocin has more areas it can bond onto. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to form what we call a gap junctions between these cells. Now remember, I'm just showing this as two, but this is gonna happen all over. But I'm actually gonna draw these just a little bit bigger because I'm gonna be coming back to these, all right? So these are going to be my cells here. So then we get the gap junction, right? The function of the gap junction is to make it so that when oxytocin activates these, the cells all contract at the same time. And when I get the muscle cells all contract at the same time, I can now push that baby out. So now we got the baby in the head of the, going into the, the, its head is going into the cervix. What that's going to do is that is going to send a signal. So I, went, I have my counter receptors in here, right? So when the baby's head gets in there, it stretches it out, and that's going to activate mechanoreceptors. The mechanoreceptors now are going to send a signal up to the brain. Let me draw a brain here. All right, let me make sure you guys can see that on there. Yeah. And once it gets into the brain, it's going to go to the part, a part of the hypothalamus that we are going to call the paraventricular nucleus. The paraventricular nucleus now is going to secrete a hormone, which we are going to call, guess what it is, oxytocin. Now, sitting right below the hypothalamus, what's going to happen, that's a U right here, I made it look like an N, but sitting right here, I have oxytocin. Now, right below this, we have something called the infundibulum, and then we're going to have the anterior pituitary, and then we're going to have the posterior pituitary. So what's going to happen is my oxytocin is going to travel down axons, and it's going to go to the synaptic terminal that's in here, right? So it's going to travel down the axon to the synaptic terminal, and again, this is the posterior pituitary. And then it's going to be released into the bloodstream. From the bloodstream now, that oxytocin is going to travel and bond onto these receptors that are in here. When it bonds onto these receptors, what it's going to do is it's going to open up ion channels. So here's my ion channels, right? And when it opens those ion channels, calcium can now enter into the muscle. The other thing this is going to do is it's going to, inside of here, I have something called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So let's just say this is my sarcoplasmic reticulum right here. And the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to contain calcium. And so what it's going to do now is it's going to release calcium also. Now I get the buildup of calcium in here. Again, I'm only drawing it there. This is on all the muscles that we see, all the muscle cells we see here, right? So now I get that calcium in there and when the calcium's in there, that's now gonna cause the muscles to contract, and as the muscles contract, we start pushing the baby down. The other thing is, is that oxytocin works on a positive feedback mechanism. So as, as we contract and we start to push the baby down, more signals are sent to the brain, to the paraventricular nucleus, which releases oxytocin, which goes into the blood, comes back and causes more contractions, which then sends a signal to the brain, which goes to the paraventricular nucleus and the hypothalamus, which secretes more oxy oxytocin, which enters the blood and comes back. It's positive feedback. Right? We're, no, we're used to hearing negative feedback, right? Like if you, get, if you get hot, your body does something to make you cool. In this case, the more you contract, the more you get contractions. So that's going to be it for the uterus. Let's take a look now after the baby's born. And now we have a breast right here, right? This is going to be the nipples. This is going to be my lactiferous ducts here. This is going to be the lobules. These are all mammary glands, right? And remember, it's about 15 to 20 lobules will make up a lactiferous duct. But anyway, so we have these here, right? Now, I'm gonna just take some of these out and we're gonna take a look at this real quick. These are called, by the way, these are gonna be called alveolar cells. Um, alveolar cells. And these contain milk. 
okay? So I'm gonna just tape one out. I'm just gonna draw it right here. And like we said, it's gonna have milk on the inside. And if you watch my video on prolactin, I talk about how, how the milk is made. And then what's going to happen is when a baby starts suckling on the nipple, this is the nipple here, we are gonna have mechanoreceptors that are in here. So let me just draw mechanoreceptors right there and right there. And so what's gonna happen is when the mechanoreceptors become stimulated, we are going to get a signal that's gonna come back. It's gonna go same exact thing. It's gonna go up to the brain, to the paraventricular nucleus, from the paraventricular nucleus, we're gonna get oxytocin released. Oxytocin is gonna go into the bloodstream. And then what the oxytocin is going to do is it's going to come over into this lobule by these, uh, blood, by this, these cells. On these cells, we actually have a smooth muscle, which we call myoepithelium. Or if you wanna call them myoepithelial cells, let's call them that, myoepithelial cells. Their smooth muscle, right? What's going to happen now is once again, these are going to have receptors on them, right? My oxytocin is going to bond to these receptors and it's going to cause these muscles to contract. When those muscles contract, what's going to happen is this milk is going to be shot out. Let's draw my duck right there, right? My elective for a sinus, okay? The milk is going to be shot out into the baby's mouth. And remember, I said this on the prolactin video that most people think the baby sucks on there. It's like a straw, it sucks the milk out. It doesn't, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute before milk, for all this to happen and milk to be shot into the baby's mouth. So the baby doesn't suck it out. The baby initiates the reaction for all this to happen. And then about 30 seconds to a minute later, the, uh, the milk is going into the baby's mouth. One other thing about oxytocin, there's actually a whole bunch of functions that they're not quite sure about. But one other thing, when people are in love, uh, the amount of oxytocin increases, um, also at orgasm it increases. So it's sometimes known as the love hormone, okay? But anyways, that's it for oxytocin. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button and we'll catch you next time. I'm gonna move the camera so you can see the little bit more of the pictures if you wanna see the whole thing. Thanks for watching.